Married for Sight season 17, episode six. So we are knee deep in the honeymoons and Lauren and Orion and Claire and Cameron, AKA Rudy Patootie Pants are clearly in trouble. Hi, I'm Tamara and this is Tamara Lynette Tales. Overall, the honeymoons haven't been really fun to watch. Like Lauren and Orion just can't seem to get off the struggle bus. Like usual, they started off the episode good. They talked about having a tough night working through the Redskin situation. But overall, they seem to have been able to work past it and to get to a place where they can continue to move forward. They were at the Cenotes talking about it and woo wee they looked a little rough, like sad, drained, and exhausted. Tell at this point, I wonder if they even still consider themselves to be bonnet buddies. Bonnet buddies! So Orion is back to saying that he feels safe with Lauren and I'll believe that when I see it because as offended as he was, it's only natural to have some guards up until they can get through like an entire day without having one of them ask a question that they shouldn't because the questions they ask seem to take them down an ethnic road that they don't want to be on. To the confessional cam, Lauren said, it feels good to get grace from my husband and if there's one thing I want my husband to feel for me is safe. I think he feels more relieved to have been able to get past that moment off camera where he may have felt that he had his entire indigenous community hanging on his every word more so than he feels safe with Lauren. But they agreed that no matter what kind of conversations they have at night, that they'll wake up and give hugs and kisses and snuggles in the morning. Now that sounds cute and all, but based on the upcoming previews, I don't think that they're gonna keep that little wake up to snuggles, little pinky promise they just made. But for now, they say they're happy in a relationship. Now, while they're on that boat trip, they were going on and on about how great things are between them. And Lauren talked about how comfortable she feels giving her heart to Orion. So much to the point that she can't see anything that could happen that can make them say the D word. Mm -hmm. Orion was kind of nodding his head, but he was probably thinking, say something else about my people and I'll show you what could happen. I'll slap a deeper divorce on your forehead so dang fast. So at dinner, they were talking a little erotic about what they like to do to their partner, where they like to do it, and where they like to start. I'm like, okay, grown folks, get your sex talk on. Things were going good. They both seemed to be turned on by each other on the same page sexually until they weren't. Now, Ryan mentioned that it makes him feel good to hear that there is no pressure for sex because it's been quite some time since he's had it. Now, Lauren asked him, how long has it been? Now, I was thinking if it were me, would I have asked that question? Because my bestie says all the time that I ask a lot of questions when I meet people, but if I had sex semi recently and a guy I'm interested in is saying it's been a long time for him, I think I would have just let that statement linger and maybe even change the subject. I wouldn't ask him how long it's been for him because I wouldn't want him to ask me the same question because some men kind of feel a certain type of way. If they know the woman they just met has been more sexually active recently than they have, at least that's what I've heard. I've of course never experienced that personally. <laughs> anyway, Orion said it's been a little bit more than a year and a half since he had sex. So that means he was 25 or 24 years old the last time he got busy. Now, Lauren tells him that she had sex two months ago. Not just two months ago, but two months to today's date. Oh no, why did his whole body language change? I'm like, here we go. Mr. Man is bothered. He said, I'm feeling uncomfortable because when producers revealed to me that I was engaged, as far as I was concerned, I was married. And she was like, me too. Now the sex happened before she was picked to do the show. And let's be real, there's thousands of applicants and the odds of getting picked are slim to none. He said, maybe it's just a different mindset, but I know my worth and I just don't like to hand myself out like that. Excuse you, Mr. Gersh certificate, Mr. When you hit the wall, it's a little disappointing. Mr. Have you ever been too big to enjoy the woman you're with? Dude, you spent 20 minutes at your bachelor party bragging about the girth of your dipstick and how you like to use it and how it's cost you the opportunity to be in relationships. Now you got the nerve to sit back and act like you're holier than thou and even went as far as taking sex off the table. 
You are so canceled. They played this clip on After Party and Orion got straight up booed by Emily and Claire. At least that's what it sounded like to me. And Keisha said she wanted to throw her cards at him. Now I put a clip of this up on my Instagram if you haven't already seen it at Tamara Lynette Tales. So anyway, Keisha was like, what is the problem with Lauren having sex months before she even knew you existed? He said, it's a turnoff for me. And Keisha asked, okay, what's an acceptable amount of time? I don't even know. I wanted to table sex. Man, if you don't even know what an acceptable amount of time was, how does anyone answer that question correctly? And why ask a question that you can't handle the answer to, sir? So he said he talked to his sister about this and she said he slut shamed his wife. And in the end, this was a really humbling learning experience for him. Now to me, his response was very judgmental and immature. Their relationship was already fragile with this reaction. He just lit a match and threw it on her box of kinky curly hair extensions. This relationship is about to go up in flames. By the way, if you're enjoying my content, please hit the like button and subscribe if you haven't already. The likes and the comments and the subscriptions all help my channel grow, so thank you. As for Emily and Brendan, not much happened between these two. Brendan keeps saying what a catch Emily is and how lucky he feels to be with her, but then turns around and says that she's not in his little trust circle. Sounds like he assumes that you are untrustworthy until you prove otherwise. Now, meanwhile, Emily's wrist was like seriously hurt. She sprained it when she fell after they took their little half naked, but we didn't have sex shower together. Meanwhile, her weave got so knotted up like Sasquatch's ankles after walking through a pond fishing for crabs. I wonder if this was like her first weave because you got to comb it and tie it up before you get in the water, girl, or it's going to mat up like it did. Now, next time, ask Sally Beauty Supply over there, Lauren, for help because she'll hook you up with a bonnet, edge control, and everything. On After Party, Emily said the hairstylist who helped her with her weave didn't speak any English. Well, you are in Mexico, ma'am. But he didn't bring scissors, so she gave him her eyebrow scissors. Child, if the man was ill-prepared, you may have been better off handing those scissors to any of the other brides to cut that possum hair out your head. Emily said she lost a lot of hair. That dude was going crazy with the scissors. On After Party, she also said that she feels like as she makes corrections according to Brennan's feedback and does things to get closer to him, he keeps pulling away from her, like he keeps moving the goalpost. I wonder what type of corrections he's asking her to make. I suspect that her lack of relationship experience and eagerness to hook up might be turning him off, which is what I predicted from the get-go. Having to teach his wife how to be in a relationship, it was going to get old fast. I don't believe he's as into her as he makes it seem to the confessional cam. Claire and Cameron, aka Rudy Patootie Pants. Now they had a paint splashing session or whatever it's called. They were in a dark room and throwing paint on a canvas. I would have been mad as Helen if they made me go in there with no protective gear over my clothes. They ended up getting into a paint fight, which did not look fun to me, by the way. And it completely ruined the outfits they were wearing. I would have been so pissed. Anyway, as I suspected, Rudy Patootie Pants is not being honest about his true feelings about Claire. Well, at least not to her face. He told the guys that he's very attracted to her. When Claire saw that scene on After Party, her mouth dropped open. She said that when he explained that conversation, that's not how he related to her. Rudy Patootie told her that he told the guys that the attraction wasn't there for them yet. Dude, you straight up lying. Put on your big boy pants and tell the truth. There's no shame in being attracted to your wife, sir. So now, based on watching this scene, she feels like he's giving her 40% authenticity. And keep in mind that After Party is taped after decision day. So it's too late for her to use this information in a positive way during their eight weeks, because it's over. Now, Rudy Patootie Pants messed this up on their wedding night by being so crass towards her. Now, she took it as a lack of attraction, but it was probably insecurity in him rejecting her before she could reject him, which is how I saw that scenario from the beginning. On day two, when Claire spoke for both of them by saying, attraction isn't there for us yet, am I right? I'm right, right? 
Earlier that day, he told her that he asked the experts for a tall, slender woman, and he didn't get what he asked for, which is a straight up insult to Claire, by the way. But it also misled her into believing he wasn't into her physically. So she's been operating from a place of feeling like her husband isn't attracted to her throughout the entire honeymoon because he's too big of a dingleberry to be honest and simply tell his wife that she's beautiful or whatever. So in reality, Claire is the only one in that relationship struggling with not being attracted to their spouse. He's good. In the meantime, Rudy Patootie seems to be calming down a bit and trying to pour on the charm. But the problem is he's kind of a klutz, heavy handed and not very charming. He tried to put his arm around her neck and ended up tugging her hair by mistake. Later, he was trying to throw her a compliment and said, it doesn't help that you're easy on the eyes instead of it doesn't hurt that you are easy on the eyes. So this relationship is a whole hot mess. Unless Rudy Patootie Pants decides to start being honest about his real feelings, they are basically building a relationship based on false information. The things he's saying to her aren't true. They would actually be in a better situation if she knew he was a attracted to her. This is self-sabotage playing out right in front of our faces. Now, Becca and Austin, these two are still going strong. Austin admitted to downplaying their relationship to the guys so they won't feel bad about their own relationships. So Becca said, by extinguishing your own candle, you don't light someone else's. Austin, what are you doing? This is married at first sight, not bros at first sight. And if these guys are truly your bros, they would be happy for you and your relationship. But even if they aren't, who cares? You are not there for them. You signed up for this crazy experience for a wife. If you walk away with some friends, that's a bonus. But a wife is supposed to be the real prize. This scenario made me think of you who have been in my comments saying that Austin doesn't like Becca as much as she likes him. Maybe y'all were right because that situation just doesn't make sense. Now, later to the confessional cam, Becca said that they are doing good, but they haven't had hard hitting conversations like religion and politics. Ooh, y'all need to talk about it because this show is notorious for ignoring people's religious and political point of views when matching them. They'll match an extreme liberal with an extreme conservative without a second thought. It will be interesting to see how their political and religious views line up, if they do. Now, overall, after watching this episode, it kind of feels like the husbands aren't being honest when it comes to their feelings about their spouses. Rudy Patootie Pants likes Claire more than what he's admitting to her. Brennan seems to be praising Emily on camera, but pushing her away behind the scenes. Is Austin really downplaying his relationship to the guys? Or is he overplaying it to Becca? Orion claims to have forgiven Lauren for her mistake from last week's episode, but did he really? In the meantime, a next week's previews for Lauren and Orion are not looking good. You know it's bad when they have to dust off Pastor Cal and put him on a video call because it's almost unheard of that we see an expert during the honeymoon to help these people out. Well, that's all I have for now. Thanks for hanging out with me and I'll see you in my next video.